I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Setting up a saltwater tank is one thing. Making it and keeping it successful over the long term is something completely different. Now one piece of that making it and keeping it successful long term puzzle is managing your tank nutrients and tank parameters. Reefers use the term nutrients loosely. When we talk about nutrients, we really mean nitrates and phosphates. So why are we concerned about nitrates and phosphates? Well, the two biggest building blocks of algae are nitrates and phosphates, and I'm willing to bet you don't want any nuisance algae in your display tank. Therefore, we pay attention to nutrients. Now, nutrients can also affect coral growth, which is another reason we pay attention to them. Here are the ideal tank parameters when it comes to nutrients. Note that salinity isn't a nutrient, but it's a very important tank parameter. So I always test for it first, and I've included it in this chart. Ideal tank parameters are a good guideline, but what's more important is finding out the range where your tank is happy and keeping it inside of that range. See, reefing is a dance. Sometimes you go this way, sometimes you go that way, depending on what your tank is doing. So instead of getting caught up on hitting an ideal number, getting an exact measurement, exact number out of your tank, find out where your tank is happy in this range and then keep it within that range. You're gonna get rewarded by having better coral growth, better looking corals, healthier fish, and overall, a better reefing experience. What creates nutrients and what makes them rise? Lots of things. Uneaten fish food, fish waste, detritus in your tank, dead corals, dead fish, dead invertebrates, things breaking down in your tank all contribute to nutrients. Now phosphates are also part of nutrients and phosphates also come in in fish food, but that's not bad. A building block of life is phosphates. So the idea of getting your phosphates down to zero or near zero Completely overblown, don't freak out about your phosphates until they get too high. Nutrients are important, phosphates are important, you want to control them, but you don't want to eradicate them. Now what happens if your nutrients are out of whack? Here are some things you can do if your nutrients are too low. Add fish. Of course, make sure they're fully quarantined before you add them to your tank. Feed your fish more. Reduce filtration by turning your skimmer on or off. Now you want to do this for a couple hours a day and make sure that it doesn't impact your nutrients too heavily. Leave your filter socks or filter pads in for extended periods of time. If you usually change them every three days, change them once a week. Remove phosphate removing media like GFO. Okay, so what about when your nutrients are too high? You can do water changes. And if you're gonna do water changes, keep this in mind. Here's the thing about water changes. They can be a great short-term fix. They're not, however, a long-term sustainable solution to whatever nutrient or tank parameter issue that you're dealing with. Take, for example, nitrates. Let's say you have nitrate level of 50. You wanna bring those down, so you do a 50% water change, and you knock your nitrates down to 25. Well, unless you fix the source of that nitrate problem, then the next day or two, you're gonna see those nitrates start to creep up again. You'll be right back to 50. You can do another water change, but I don't know anyone who wants to do heavy water changes every other day, every two days on their tank. Likewise, if your parameters are too low and you're using a water change to bring them back up, you can't keep doing water changes enough to bring those parameters back in check. So water changes are good, they have their place, but you can't rely on them long term. Reduce the number of fish. Please find the fish good homes, don't just flush them. Reduce the amount of food you feed your fish. Chances are you're already overfeeding, so cutting back even 10% the amount of food that you're feeding isn't gonna hurt a thing. Stop feeding corals. Unless your corals are non-photosynthetic, they don't need to be fed. Increase filtration. Add a protein skimmer if you don't have one. Get a better skimmer if you do have one. Get better gear. Add a refugium. Add phosphate removing media like GFO. You can also start carbon dosing. Lots of hobbyists get confused about carbon dosing, so let's set the record straight. Adding activated carbon to your tank is not carbon dosing. You add activated carbon to suck up dissolved organics, other nasties in your tank, but overall it's not gonna do much for your nutrient issues in your tank. Carbon dosing involves adding a carbon source to your tank, like this solid carbon source, which is the bio pellets. Now, what happens is you add carbon source to your tank, that spurs bacteria growth in the right conditions, the bacteria eats up the nutrients, and then you export the nutrients mainly through protein skimming. So that's the difference between carbon dosing and adding activated carbon to your tank. 
two different things, now you know the difference. The two biggest lessons I want to leave you with about nutrients in your tank is first, test them so you know what they are. Run your tests and then write down the results. Second, learn to dance with your tank's nutrient and tank parameter levels. Don't try to hit an exact number. Remember, a range is fine. As long as you dance in that range, your tank's gonna be happier, you're gonna be happier, and you're gonna have a better saltwater tank experience. I'm Mark Hanlon, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Till next time, enjoy your tanks, happy testing and recording, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Thank <music> you.